whenever you're ready. Hi, my name is David, and I live with mental illness. Before I go any farther, I want to dedicate this speech to Sean Kiefer, Lindley Redwood, and Ben Asma, the three students that have taken their lives this year at GW, along with the 10,000 other Americans that have taken their lives since January. I want to bring you back two months, almost to the day, actually. I was lying down in my bath. This was a long day. I wanted to work out school, average, any other day. Parents were gone. The house was quiet. Lying there with my eyes closed, enjoying the moment. I heard a noise, just a hand of noise, and I looked over instinctively. And I had to look past the spilled pills and the stains of the sleeping medication. Right now is Mental Health Awareness Month, and this is a conversation we need to have. Living with mental illness is like drowning. You're alone, afraid, and you're cold to the bone. You don't know which way is up, and you are trying desperately to hold on to that breath for just one more day. Well, I managed to take that breath. And I heard my heart slow from the overdose of medication, slowing down. They say life flashes before your eyes when you think you're about to die. And when you thought you're, you killed yourself, it's, that's wrong. It slows down to a stop. And in that moment, your brain screams at you a thousand things. You aren't, weren't, can't be, will never be good enough. And there's nothing you can do about it. But most days, I was like any other kid. I sat next to you at lunch, went to your classes, laughed at your jokes, played on your sports team. Maybe I was quieter than most, but I never stood out. The thing about mental illness is that you can't see it, hear it, and it can happen to anyone. So they have to say it. But I felt, like so many others, that no one would listen. And now that I got the help I so desperately needed, no one would guess I've tried to take my life multiple times. But maybe they did, and maybe they still do. But I never find out, and I never will. Because mental illness is exclusively talked about behind closed doors. But when 25% of all deaths of adolescents ages 13 to 21 is done by their own hands, these doors need to be opened. This is a conversation we need to have. And to do this, we have to remember. We have to give a voice to those who are too afraid and too deep underwater to speak. So I'm gonna bring you back to that moment. I folded my clothes perfectly in the corner. I had washed and dried the towel that I never planned on using and put it next to the, bed, uh, the bathtub. The soaps were all lined perfectly in height. And this was to give myself a sense of control, like I had it all together. But you could look at the pills that had spilled from my shaking hands and the stains from the medication that I had tried to gulp down. And that showed you really what was happening. And in that moment, I felt like I couldn't reach over my phone, which was right on the side of the bathtub, and call my friends, my family, and tell them that I had made a mistake. So when I heard my heart slow down and my eyes started to shut, I knew there was nothing I could do. Well, I still stand here. I woke up by luck and I took care of myself. No one found me. I wasn't put into the hospital. But on that moment, I realized that I couldn't waste another second, and I could not let anyone go down this road and make the mistake I made. Mark Hennick says, can suicide be a choice if it is the only choice? Well, for those of you who haven't had this experience, which I hope is none of you, people feel like they can't be helped because there are stigmas from society, family, movies, news, whatever. Let's say people with mental illness are monsters, criminals, degenerates, and they will kill people and that they can't be helped. Well, that's not true. The World Health Organization found that 90% of people with a diagnosable mental illness can be treated and put into a normal state with a simple revenue of medication and psychotherapy. But the thing is, the shocking thing that a psychologist uh, Alistair Corrigan found is that most people who have access to this choose not to go and get help. And they choose to get worse because they don't want to be classified as having a mental illness. 
So this is not okay. We have to take charge of this. We have to have an open discussion and speak out. We have to challenge the old ideas. Because when you can start by changing the way you talk about it and stop saying that someone's committed suicide. No one has committed suicide since the late 1970s when suicide was decriminalized. People commit murder. People commit rape. No one commits suicide. It is a choice, an unfortunate choice, but one that they feel like they have to make. This is a study of just Americans um, from the World Health Organization. One point, I mean, 8.3 million Americans had thoughts of suicide. 1.1 million attempted suicide. Now, whether you try to or not, it's not something you need to do. They also found that every year worldwide, there's 20 million attempted suicides. This is not a local problem. This is not a national problem. It is an international problem that can affect anyone at any time. Whether you have a mental illness or not, you have to speak out because this can happen to you, to your brother, your mother, your neighbor, your classmate, someone in this room. And I know that I can't sit around and let that happen. So listen for those silent screams of the people underwater. Reach your hands down and help them when they are too weak to help themselves. We needed your help. I needed your help. So go out there, open the discussion, make sure that therapy and medication is open to anyone because it is simple, it is an easy change, and it can change the lives of the 40,000 people every year in America alone that take their own lives. Thank you. Good, good job. Good, good job. That was Dave, Dave Sullivan.